Hello and welcome to Pharma Television News Review here in Munich at BioEurope 2010. On this show, I have Christian Zand, who is the CEO of a company called Molecular Partners based in Zurich. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, Christian uh, Molecular Partners, as I said, is a company based in Switzerland. Uh, you have some unique technology. Uh, we're, going to tell, we're going to talk about that. But could you tell us a little bit about the origins of the company and who your investors are? Mm -hmm, absolutely. Molecular Partners has been spun out of the University of Zurich. So it's a typical academic startup spin out. Um, it came out of a technology which has been developed by the group of Andreas Plüktun, one of the co founders of Morphosis, um, an antibody um, focused um, company and based in Munich. Um, the technology we were developing there is basically based on a DARPIN technology and that has been taken out of university late 2004 and since then the company has been around. And the company went through a first dilutive financing round um, with venture capital coming in mid-2007. Um, the company has raised 18.5 million Swiss francs um, by a syndicate led by Index Ventures. There was um, also other investors in that syndicate, namely Johnson & Johnson Development Corporation, um, BB Biotech and Endeavor. Um, the company went on with the cash actually to the current day. Um, however, we did a Series B financing round almost a year ago, December 2009, um, when the company raised another 45 million US dollars um, from a syndicate um, led by Essex Woodlands. And all the existing investors also participated in that round. So the current investors involve Essex Woodlands, Index Ventures, Johnson um, Johnson, Johnson Development Corporation, uh, BB Biotech and Endeavor. Okay, so the, you've got a, an enthusiastic group of uh, venture capitalists behind you. Absolutely. Um, so why are they? I mean, tell us, tell us a little bit about DARPINs and, and, and the relevance of DARPINs in relation to therapy. DARPINs can, 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 can consider to be like uh, antibody fragment technology. There are small 15 kilo Dalton binding proteins. They are highly selective, they're highly specific, and they're based on a, a natural concept of pro providing them um, protein, protein, attracting proteins, which are very abundant. So next to the IG fold, which is the fundamental building block of an antibody, the repeat protein is the most abundant concept of doing protein-protein interactions. And the DARPIN is exactly exploring that concept to make designed um, um, repeat proteins or designed binding proteins with a desired function and we can generate these molecules against any specificity we like. We did that in the past of the company in, in more than 70 cases um, highly successfully and the DARPIN itself offers quite a few unique points as compared to other technologies. I'm talking about its manufacturability, we do that in microbial strains and high, very high yields, so mm -hmm. um, 10 grams per liter is, 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 is as easily um, feasible. Um, the molecules are highly stable, so in downstream processing, in purification, we just heat up the bacterial lysates and basically we um, retain the, the soluble DARPIN, everything else precipitates. Um, the molecules are highly soluble, so we can easily concentrate them way beyond the 200 milligrams per milliliter um, um, concentrations, making feasible sub-Q formulations, making feasible all kinds of other application forms, um, also shelf life of this is a very, very straightforward thing. Um, beyond that, the technology really offers to go for multi-specific approaches. So basically combining different of these DARPIN molecules within one molecule and basically blocking at once two different targets. Targets. And by that, it, it offers a completely novel therapeutic modality. It basically offers to interact with networks of targets, with network of diseases, and basically comes across the classical paradigm in biologics development. There is one target, there is one antibody, you block that single target and you cure a disease, which is a huge oversimplification. And so the DARPIN really allows to go with these multi-specific approaches more in a redundant pathway setting and really blocking multiple pathways, multiple targets at once. So obviously the use of these DARPINs, you have to be careful about what therapy areas you're going to go, what diseases you're going to go for. So <clears throat> could you tell us which ones you've selected and where you are with those particular programs? 
Mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm, I'm glad to do so. In principle, the applicability of the platform is extremely broad. You could consider going into infectious diseases, into immunology, into oncology, into ophthalmology, you name it. There is no limitation in terms of the applicability of the technology. It's more a strategic means to decide what areas to go into. Sure. We have picked a lead asset, a lead compound, which was a VHF A antagonist, um, which we developed for ophthalmological indications. And um, we are currently running two phases. Phase A um, and two, two, two phase two A studies, one in the US in DME, one in Europe in VET AMD. Um, it's a patient trial and we have 50 patients dosed to date and are just now basically reading out the data. We have follow-up pipeline in immunology and we have follow-up pipeline in oncology. So these are the three areas we are mostly focusing on, ophthalmology, immunology and oncology. So the business model that you're adopting, you've obviously got something that's, as you say, it's a broad platform. It's a platform, you may even describe it as a disruptive technology that you've, you, you've developed. So what is the business model for your company going forward? That the business model is a balance of doing proprietary pipeline development ourselves and going into um, dedicated and engaged collaborations with big pharmaceutical companies. The Molecular Partners has closed the first major pharmaceutical collaboration on drug development early 2008 with Johnson & Johnson um, in immunology. So that's a collaboration that focuses on inflammation of the airways and there are um, um, two programs basically making good progress in that collaboration. Um, Molecular Partners will continue to do these kind of collaborations to um, um, explore the, the full breadth of the platform. The platform is so broad that we cannot explore and leverage the full value ourselves. So we are going to continue to do these kind of collaborations on the technology and also clearly we are going to look for the assets we are developing ourselves, the proprietary asset at the right point in terms of the value generating chain and um, what the right point is basically to look for a partner to, to further um, advance the, 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 the project. Right. In, in a sense what you've got, if I could call it, uh, like a toolkit in a, fa in a, in a sense. Mm -hmm. So how do you, you know, when you talk about a collaboration, can a collaboration occur? inside the laboratories of a, of a pharmaceutical company or does the company have to come to you and you do, uh, do all the science basically up to a certain point? We are a great believer that those parties should do the work that understand most of what they do. And clearly there is a, a huge vast of experience and knowledge about DARPA and technology of molecular partners and it wouldn't make sense at all to basically transfer that knowledge and that technology to a pharmaceutical partner. So these collaborations will always be set up and are always set up in a way that we basically um, are exploring and apply, um, applying the DARPA technology and the pharmaceutical um, partner is providing biology or we also provide that. So there's different steps or different levels where we basically would hand over a project on these early technology um, um, collaborations. Okay. We, we clearly consider the DARPA technology not as a technology but as an engine to, to deliver compounds. Um, it's very, um, it's very um, um, potent, it's very, it's very efficient to basically get our molecules within the very reasonable times and that, that's a means to basically explore and exploit that um, productivity of the engine. Right. And you have DARPAs are a general set of proteins but you have to design them. Uh, presumably, to, to, for the, to, to develop the specificity. So just in terms of the patent portfolio that surrounds DARPINs, mm -hmm. presumably you've got the broad patents that, that, that uh, describe or the use of DARPINs for therapeutic use. Mm -hmm. And then you have to have a series of patents which are on the specific application of specific DARPINs to specific disease states. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. It's, it's even a little more complicated. We are typically working out of libraries. So we typically start with very, very complex libraries, 10 to the power of 12, even larger um, actual diversity of these libraries. And with the, the established selection technologies, such as ribosome display, such as phage display, we basically can select and pick the right molecules out of these libraries. So the IP protection is first around the libraries and the technologies. It's second about the selection technologies, how we take out these molecules. Um, then it's a lot of platform protection around the manufacturability, the, the developability of the molecules. And clearly as the most specific way of eye protection there is every single product coming out of that library is by composition of matter claims, by target claims, by function claims around these molecules and additionally being protected. Right. Now as you said it is a broad, uh, broad application. 
So, as you say, you already have uh, collaboration with, with Johnson Johnson. You've also got earlier stage, I understand, collaborations with uh, GSK and uh, Roche, is that correct? No, we had very early collaborations with Bayer Schering and, and Hoffman LaRoche, but okay. they were not really on drug development, they were more on the technology itself. Right, okay. So, going forward, you are um, you know, here at, at, at Bio Europe, you're presumably meeting up with companies. So, what is your strategy in terms of further partnerships? Um, in terms of further partnerships, we see a lot of value in having um, a couple of very dedicated partners. We are not looking to spread the technology throughout the pharmaceutical industry. We rather try to enable few committed partners, but we are also willing to enable them quite significantly. So what we're looking for is basically strategic collaborations with strategic partners which get uh, broad access to the technology, on the other hand also which enable molecular partners in return obviously in a really strategic means. So meaning um, mostly independent from, from dilutive financing sources. So that's the partnering strategy on the technology to go forward, which is independent on what we do on our pipeline assets, which we have developed to proof of concept of beyond. Right. <clears throat> so. Going forward, I mean, clearly, you're still at, at very much the early stages of the development of the company. Uh, where do you want to go? What do you want to become a, a specialty pharma company? Do you want to be just a, an innovative biotech company with a platform and doing lots of deals? You said you're going to do few deals, but are you? You know, what is, what is your aspiration for the company going forward? We see a lot of potential in the platform, and we see that it needs a dedicated team to basically bring the value of the DARPIN platform really to a proof of concept, a clinical proof of concept at the end to the market. So there is a lot of commitment within the investor base and within the management team of Molecular Partners to really build that forward, to bring that forward. Um, whether that's independently or not, that's another question. So there's just different um, strategic options to do so, but clearly there's a lot of commitment also to bring that independently forward and really build the engine to a way that we can um, basically deliver products. Um, it's very clear Molecular Partners will specialize in terms of therapeutic areas. So we will, we will need to jerry pick and basically go in certain areas. Mm -hmm. And it's also clear there's too much potential we will not be able to explore ourselves if we stay independent. Um, and we will need to, to find models that we can basically um, also leverage the potential and the value of those aspects of the platform we cannot leverage ourselves. So what can we expect from your company over the next three to four years? Uh, I think there is quite a bit of um, hopefully good news coming um, we expect a lot of um, data coming in from the lead compound so we are just now reading out data and this is very soon going to be published with what we see there. Um, we have a um, very exciting early stage pipeline so also there we expect to um, um, be able to go, um, come up with, with very good news on the pipeline. Um, I believe that it, um, it, would, it would be a great thing to basically be able to announce strategic partnerships and given the interest we see in the pharmaceutical um, industry, it should be possible to basically come up with strategic partners to, to, to further build um, the, the, the technology forward. And so I think we are kind of approaching a steady state in the business model of molecular partners where we can further progress our internal pipeline and, and then also um, continue the, the, the value generation with our um, partnerships on the technology but also on the lead assets. Christian Zand, thank you very much indeed for coming on the show. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me. Hello.